There comes a time when we can just retire from church, right? No, I don't mean me specifically, Bruce, as pastor of First Baptist, retiring from this position. So those of you who are rejoicing with much rejoicing right now can just stop for the moment. But what I mean is, do we all get to that stage in life where we can just stop? We've done our time. It's time for other people to pick up the slack. We can step aside. That time comes, right? Or does it? It's a small thing, but an important thing. Notice how old Moses is in Exodus 7, verse 7. He's 80 years old. And how old is Aaron? Aaron is 83. Do you know that the word retirement isn't in the Bible anywhere? In fact, there's nothing even close to it. Surprise, it's just not there. It's not an option for us. When it comes to believing in Jesus, living out our faith consistently, hearing God's call on our lives, doing what we can to influence others for the Lord, and actually taking up our staff and doing things for God and for his kingdom, and being involved in things like church, there is no retirement option. We never retire. We're never too old. There is no example of anyone in Scripture just sort of sitting back at the end of their life and saying, you know what, I've done my time. It's time for someone else to take up the mantle. Notice, however, that God didn't call the 80-year-old Moses to make a bunch of bricks, put them in a wheelbarrow, and go trudging out to build a wall. He didn't call 83-year-old Aaron to sprint the length of Pharaoh's throne room. God gave Moses a staff, a cane, to throw down, and he gave Aaron some words to speak. I think maybe when I'm an octogenarian, I might even be able to handle those two things. Whoever you are, wherever you are in life, whatever your limitations might be, you still have a purpose in God's kingdom. God can still use you in profound and wonderful ways. For those of us who are younger, take advantage of some of those more mature people in your lives. God has given you some godly role models and mentors. They can help us face the challenges that we face because they've been there, done that. So this sermon is for you too to think about how you can age well yourself, but also how you can take advantage of those older people that God has given you in your life. Is there any good side to getting older? Well, let's be honest. This does apply to all of us because not one of us is getting any younger. We're all getting older, whether we're 7, 17, or 70 we're all getting older every day, every year. Nothing is going to stop that. So given this is a reality in life, how can we age well? How can each year be a bit better than the one that went before? How can we age in a way that reflects our Christian faith? Sometimes we lament the aging process. The golden years are not so golden they should call them the rusty years, not the golden years. But in particular, from a Christian perspective, is there a different way of looking at the way our lives inevitably go? In all our culture, we tend to equate aging with losing abilities rather than gaining abilities. In general cultural terms, getting older is mostly, if not all, bad. We evaluate people based on their their youth and their physical health and strength. We idolize young, strong, fit people and don't quite know what to do with those of us who've lost a step or two or lost a hair or two or a few hundred. There's a dramatic cultural shift from almost every other culture in history which actually honored age and venerated it and saw older people as people with wisdom and experience. Many cultures, including our own First Nations, continue to respect age, but in general, we don't. <laughs> when it comes to sports, like hockey and football, for instance, there is probably some merit in betting on the younger people. But even the best sports teams value the wily veterans 
and the wise coach too. Some of the most successful NFL coaches, for instance, are well into their late 60s. But when it comes to a lot of things in life, is youth the be-all and end-all? The curious thing is that when it comes to business, politics, healthcare, education, and even spiritual maturity, we tend to celebrate youth. But is that really the best measure? Is the young guy with little life experience really the best person to be the CEO or the neurosurgeon or the MP or the team captain? When I was younger, I was physically stronger and faster, but I knew a lot less and I was much less wise. Of course, I didn't think so at the time because I was young, I was strong, and therefore I knew it all. I was the smartest, wisest, most intelligent person I knew. I was sure if only all the politicians and bosses and professors and teachers and pastors listened to me, everything would be wonderful because I knew all the answers. But as I've aged, things have changed. I can't run as fast as I used to. I can't pump as much iron as I once did. I can't burn the midnight oil like I did once upon a time. But I am more knowledgeable. By knowledge, I mean just knowing stuff. For instance, I know scripture better now than I did back then. I know how to read scripture better. I know how to use tools like commentaries and look at the original languages and cultures and all that kind of stuff. I know more about life. I know more about the world. I know more about people. My old, simplistic, idealistic answers don't work so well anymore. And I know more and more how little I still do know. One of the lessons I continue to learn is the importance of lifelong learning. I need to keep on learning, keep on growing, keep on reading, keep on, keep on thinking. I will never arrive. I'll never know it all. I'm more knowledgeable. I'm also wiser. By wisdom, I mean knowing what to do with the knowledge I have. It's one thing to know stuff. It's another thing to know how it actually applies to real life. That's wisdom. Hopefully, I'm better able to do that than I used to be. I've learned from the challenges and the opportunities that life has given me. Hopefully, we've all realized that the Bible doesn't give us specific instructions for each and every circumstance we face, like COVID-19. But we can continue to learn from wise mentors, experiences, and God's instruction to learn how to apply our biblical knowledge to the new challenges that we face. By allowing God's Spirit to shape and teach me through the wisdom of Scripture and wise mentors, my mind, my heart, and my soul are being shaped by God so that when I face new challenges, I do so wisely, Christianly, because my spirit, my soul, my mind has been shaped by God and his word. And so I need lifelong wising as well. If there's lifelong learning, there can be lifelong wising continuing to prayerfully ask God for wisdom to handle the new circumstances in life. Solomon writes in Proverbs 18, Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. Wise words are like deep waters. Wisdom, wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. I've become more knowledgeable. I've become more wise. I've also, I think, become more humble. I don't know it all anymore. I don't judge people as much as I did. I know I don't have all the answers anymore. I find I'd much rather work with a team, with other people, to find ways forward together than to think that I know it all and I have all the answers myself. I know I need the insight of wise people around me as well. The good side of getting older is that as you age, you do have more knowledge. You are wiser, but hopefully you're also more humble as well. 
And then you have insight that you can build into the people around you. Don't sell yourself short. God doesn't. All of us have some wisdom. All of us have, can be encouragers. All of us can be those who build other people up. All of us can be cheerleaders for the people around us. All of us can be people who pray for those around us as well. As I've become older and wiser and more humble, I'm appreciating more and more the importance and power of prayer. We glibly say prayer, prayer is the most powerful force in the universe. And yet how often we fail to pray. We don't take time to really value what we say is so important. In Psalm 92, we read, The godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. There are things that we can do. We can grow in knowledge. We can become more wise. We can become more humble. And we can pray. What is God asking you to do today?